slaughter. Okay. So he's got turns, able to score. Because Poland is uh, super proud of us. Uh, we cannot let them down. We want the bronze. We will leave our part on the court. This year, basket has seen it all, hasn't it? Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Berlin, Germany. This is the Phoebe Eurobasket third place game, and it's Germany taking on Poland. Enjoy the pregame hologram entertainment, and uh, again, look at the brackets here as uh, you can see how these two teams have made it this far. And if you think that looks interesting on the court, you ain't seen nothing yet. I'm Jeff Taylor, joined by Mike Taylor, and we have had a ball, quite frankly. Mike, I know that you had a great time coaching Poland over the years. 2015, Phoebe Eurobasket, 2017, Phoebe Eurobasket in France and Finland, respectively. And you've been on the other side of it as a color commentator here in uh, in Germany, in Cologne, and uh, it's been a lot of fun having you. And, and really, it's all about today. I mean, you, you, all of these teams, they, they dream about having a chance to get to the podium, because when you get to the podium, it really doesn't matter what, you know, what happened in the tournament, you leave success, you leave with a success. And for Germany, hosting, they had the dreams. Poland as well, they had the dreams to get to the finals. How do the teams recover from having their, their championship dreams dashed? You still have something to play for. You still have a third place medal here. And again, this is the hard part. You know, one of these teams is gonna walk away with a third place medal that can kind of, you know, validate all the great things they've done. And the other team, you know, leaves a little empty handed. So there's a lot at, at stake. There's a lot on the line for these two teams today. They've both had wonderful tournaments. They've both made it to this point, which is fantastic. But again, you want to finish it with something that says, hey, we accomplished something together. Uh, and I think there's a lot to play for with this bronze medal. Well, you can't help but think objectively, looking at it from my, from my seat and from probably most people, that no matter what happens for Poland, it's been a success. I don't think anybody expected them to get to the semifinals. So even though they were beaten pretty soundly uh, by France, uh, and no matter what happens today, they will leave uh, knowing they had a better than expected uh, tournament. They surpassed expectations. Without a doubt, you know, you can talk about overachieving, you can talk about getting on a great run. It's been a great moment for Polish basketball, what these guys have accomplished together, led by Mateusz Panika and AJ Slaughter and the team. Uh, you know, again, as you say, upsetting Slovenia kind of shocked the tournament, shocked the world. They struggled emotionally to recover in that game against France, and you got to give France credit. They really played well defensively. But, you know, now how can Poland emotionally recover to compete for this, this bronze medal opportunity? That's the big challenge. Uh, they've been a Cinderella. Their Cinderella dreams got dashed, and there's still something to play for. How do they recover? For Germany, for a long stretch, that was the team that I was picking to win it. And I really even thought at the end of the third quarter, they, or late in the th third quarter, they were going to make it to the final. And ultimately, they lost to Spain, and Spain deserved the win. I mean, they, there's no other way you can put it. Uh, but that should not take any of the shine off of this uh, terrific tournament from Germany. They've come out and played as a team. Uh, they've gotten some big results in Cologne. And, and really, we've seen not just a lot of current greatness in this team, but a lot of future greatness. Yeah, it, this was not a one-man show. What we loved about them, and they were so much fun to watch throughout the tournament, playing top competition. They've gotten great production from star players like Dennis Schroeder, 
from role players up and down the lineup. It's been a very impressive tournament for Germany. And really, you know, you think playing at home, Germany's offensive firepower could be the key today, as I think it's going to be a real challenge for Poland to keep up with the pace scoring wise. Well, it's been a German team where we have seen before our eyes uh, the market improvement of players like Mauro Lowe and Johannes Timon, Andreas Obst, and uh, this is going to be a fun game. But for now, uh, we're going to pause for the playing of the national anthems, starting with Poland. Well, just minutes away from the start of the third place game, see Gordy Herbert shaking hands with Igor Milicic and the players in both teams, Poland and Germany, shaking hands. And the referees, of course, uh, standing in midcourt, Antonio Conde from Spain is the crew chief, Johan Rosso and Karen Baki from France and Turkey are the umpires respectively. Rosso on the left. And turn back here on the right. And we'll also get a look at some of the, the key players that we want to focus on here before the game, Mike. And, well, you could take your pick, really, but for Poland, it's hard to look past A.J. Slaughter. Again, A.J. Slaughter means so much to this team with his offensive creativity. He's such a smart player, such a high-character guy. Uh, again, what he's done is the example for a naturalized player to fit in with a group, to become part of the basketball family, part of the culture. AJ's been fantastic, not only this tournament, but for years for Poland. Yeah, it's been great watching that duo do their stuff here at the Phoebe Ur Basket. And I'm sure that when they look back on that game against Slovenia, especially, they will remember it as one of the highlights of their international career. Igor Milicic, uh, the guy who has uh, took over from you, succeeded you as the head coach, and deserves credit for uh, for bringing them to this tournament and getting them to the semifinals. And you look at also Germany. Take your pick for their key players. They've had so many guys step up, but Dennis Schroeder, 
you know, on balance has been outstanding and really is the captain. Yeah, he's especially in the game against Spain, the way he was attacking the rim, pressuring the rim, getting into the paint. And when he is hitting his threes, as he has been in most of these tournament games, he's so difficult to guard. But again, I love the defensive effort Schroeder has put in as well for his team. He's done a great job on both ends. And Jeff, we've talked about Franz Wagner. What an impressive Euro basket he's had. Offensive weapon, ability to get into the paint and score. Difficult matchup with his length. Again, he is the rising star of German basketball. Yeah, Franz Wagner, I've put him in the same breath as Laurie Market and those two guys. The, the sensations. Gordy Herbert from uh, Canada, but has long been a coach in Germany and has the respect of everyone and has shown why because he's really done a whale of a job as head coach. He took over from Henrik Rudel, who led Germany to that great run last year at the FIBA Olympic qualifying tournament where they won it in Croatia and then played at the Olympics and had a terrific Olympic campaign. So from run, one great coach to another, from Rodel to Herbert, you know, Germany not really skipping a beat and seeing a lot of promise. And you know, a really nice moment pregame here as teams are warming up. The entire German roster came over to give Robin Benzing a hug courtside. Robin has been such a key for Germany for so many years. So Alexander Malcharowski, Mikhail Sokolowski, Aaron Sell, AJ Slaughter, and Ponika in the starting five. Siskowski, Kalinda, Shiva, Ole Mishak, uh, Mikhailik, Garbosh, and Schenk all coming off the bench. Ole Mishak, uh, Dominic Ole Mishak. Plenty of fans here today. Again, much like the players, they want to make sure their team leads with something. Johannes Volkman, Wagner, Daniel Tice, Dennis Schroeder, Andreas Obst, Ben Lowe, uh, Gefei, Weiler Bapp, Wobo, Hollitz, Timon, and Sinkfelter. Everybody's here. And all like this, just Wagner is going for the steal. So you go, you try to get a steal. Okay, okay first play. We go. Huh? Next yeah, yeah, yeah. We go back. We go back. First play. Interesting uh, that stat, particularly with Germany making so many three-pointers in this tournament, a historic mark. Historic. They've been fantastic. Again, three-point shooting from a lot of positions. But for, for Poland to have a chance to win this game today, they've got to find a way to keep pace scoring. And you could hear in the pregame huddle defensive coach Klaus Perbaz talking about the coverages. They're going to trap A.J. Slaughter's pick and rolls. They're going to switch Panika's pick and rolls. They've got a detailed game plan in place to try to stop these guys. So really, Mike, you look at the veterans in that Polish team, they have been on quite a ride. All of them playing key parts. He, uh, you know, doing the, doing everything that, that helped Poland make it to the quarterfinals of the FIBA Basketball World Cup in 2019. And here they are again, back on court. And 
this would be one of those signature moments for Polish basketball if they could get third place. It would be an amazing achievement for them. 100%. And we always talk with the players about, hey, let's do something special together. Let's try to achieve something that when you walk down the street, when your career is done, people recognize you. You've contributed to basketball in Poland. And this is another great opportunity, wonderful moment for Polish basketball and Germany basketball as well. Well, hello everybody. Welcome on this Sunday afternoon to Berlin, Germany, the Berlin Arena for the FIBA Eurobasket and the third place game between Poland and red and Germany and white and coming right out and scoring quickly. Mateusz Panika, nice bounce pass by Balcharowski. Nice post reaction, great cut from Panika and Spaku with a great pass. Three-point shot from Folkman. Slaughter loses it on the way up. Oaks at the other end for Germany. And Sell hustles down for the rebound. Volkman with the offensive rebound. Defensive rebound, excuse me. And here comes Germany. And Jeff, the early pace is where Germany wants to be up and down the court. Oaks just giving the green light. He hits it more times than not. Certainly one of, if not the premier shooter in this tournament, Oaks from three point range. He has been utterly sensational. Ponika. Oakman with the rebound, bringing it up the floor, goes behind the back to Oaks. Now Schroeder. Finds Wagner. Great defense, denying Wagner. Looks like he's going to try to throw it down. Good D. Now Ponika hands it off to Balcharowski. Again, both ends of the floor, really well done there by Balcharowski. Challenging at the rim straight up. Again, on the other side, Ponika penetrating, dropping it off to him. Balcharowski off to a strong start here for Poland. Balcharowski. And Jeff, one of the struggles for Poland this whole tournament has been from the free throw line. They've done a great job getting to the line, uh, but they've just converted at 71% as a team. Polish fans doing their bit, trying to get their team going, but Balcharowski short substantially on both of those attempts. Hopes again from the top of the key. Sokolovsky. Now down low to Tyson. He gets swatted by Balcharovsky. Good hustle. And AJ Slaughter open, and that's a nice four point swing. For Poland, I don't think uh, Tice expected that. Balcharowski has been really solid defensively here at the start. And notice Sokolowski draws the defensive matchup on Schroeder. Wow. Ponika matched up with Franz Wagner and AJ Slaughter on Hopes. This was Balcharowski. Look at this. Put it on the highlight reel.
Sokowski needs to put it up quickly. Yep. Did they get it up in time? And no, they did not. Again, Poland needs to be deliberate in their execution. They want to try to control the tempo. They obviously are not looking for the 24 second shot clock violation. But I think they'll take these long offensive possessions in an attempt to control the tempo of the game. Hoffman over to Oaks, back to Schroeder. Schroeder a full meter behind the arc. And there is Folkman missing with the putback, so a little bit of a slow start for Germany as well offensively. And you can see there's a lot of Polish fans here today, neighboring Poland, of course. And Sokowalski ties it up. And Sako can do that. Took Schroeder right on the block, strong physical post move, easy two. is again Tice and this time a foul is called here we see Sokolowski working to the middle here he can definitely post up as a perimeter player loses Schroeder with the fake and it's an easy shot we saw against France Poland really has had no inside position post position established they tried with uh, Mateusz Pinika once or twice it's a great sign Sokko came out they got a bucket on the block in the early game. Did you see the switch with Panika pick and roll coverage? They didn't force the turnover. Look out, here comes Wagner! So Mateus has to read that switch of the pick and roll coverage. And as soon as we see a pick and roll with... Oh, AJ. AJ falls down, able to get it over to Sell, who finds Sokolowski open on the wing. And good, strong rebound, Balcharowski. Goes up for the rim rock. And what a fantastic effort from Oleg Balcerowski in the early going at both ends. Really active. But nobody there for Tice. So Jeff, Germany, I'm sorry, Poland is in a hard show, pick and roll. When Balcerowski is in the show, you've got to have a low man establishing help. Now Panicka going to try to possibly take on Schroeder. And they're going to call the charge on Ponica. So again, players, coaches out there, we see the first contact from Schroeder. There's the first one. And the second one, very few times the referees will call the charge on the first contact. And that's just smart basketball from Schroeder there. Taking the contact, showing the referee I'm taking it strong, and then basically taking the charge on the second contact there. Intelligent defense by Dennis Schroeder. Second foul on Mateusz Panika. So one of Poland's main guys has to sit down. Not even six minutes into the game. Germany. They're going to ratchet up. Mihailik comes in. You lose a lot of size and skill overall with that. Maybe get some offense from Mihailik, who's got the basketball. And this is where Poland have been good. Kaczorowski puts it up and in. Jeff, playing with so much self-confidence, you love the way Oleg Balcerowski's come out here today. Nice. Really struggled in the semifinal, did Daniel Tice. He almost felt bad for him because he's such a good player, but missed a lot of key shots in that loss to Spain. Here's A.J. Slaughter. Good look for A.J. Foul to low, foul by Aaron Sell. Outstanding start for Balcerowski as he subs out. The challenge for the Polish lineup right now is keeping Schroeder, Lowe, and Wagner out of the paint. They've done such a great job all tournament with dribble penetration, creating advantage opportunities for Germany.
Tries, gives it to Wagner. Again, Poland with a hard show, great pass, teamwork from Germany. Poland's help side has to be a little bit more active and earlier. Siskowski. Nice play, Poland. Schroeder. Count it. Germany up five. And the turnover, AJ with Tice, the double team, and Tice goes down and misses another dunk. It's not finishing. Got to get back. Yep. Advantage Poland. Sokolowski. Oh, look at the dribbling. Look at that. And then he misses a dunk for Poland. has been so intelligent with his decision making and passing. He found a great passing angle there for Schroeder, cut to the basket. Timeout Poland. Tough situation for Sokolowski on the closeout. You, know, you don't want to close out and overpressure Schroeder. But there's the nice pass. Patience in the double team on the baseline. Look at him just wrap it around Jiva. And then the nice left-handed finish from Dennis. Finding a way to pressure the rim off a cut rather than the drive. But as we heard from the Polish timeout, if they're going to hard show at the point of attack in the pick and roll, they've got to have their team defense, their help side set up, and they've been, a, Poland's been a little bit slow getting to their positions in a low man and their rotation, so they've got to be a little bit more alert and a little bit more active setting up their team D earlier. Wilder Bat, who is excellent against Spain, has checked into the game, taking on Slaughter. Wobo's checked in. And Johannes Timon. Jay-Z, and it's fouled. Yaroslav Zaskowski was really important off the bench against Slovenia, scoring 14 points. He's well known in, in the Polish Basketball Domestic League and Erga Basket League as a really good scoring forward. He'll play some small forward, he'll play some stretch four, power forward, can shoot the ball, but he really attacks closeouts well. And we saw it right there drawing the foul. And the one thing that we talked before the game is his shooting arc, it's it's a line drive, which is very unusual, but he's got a great shooting touch. Yeah, it's unusual. Because the higher you get it, the higher the arc, the greater the circumference. Yes, for chance the to put it in, but he's very accurate with his shot. And a really nice sign here, Lucas Kalenda in, number 10, pressuring the ball here for Poland. One of the future uh, key players for Poland, Kalenda, his brother as well, right? Yes, Michal has a shooting forward, Lucas has a point guard. And the box out, and Kalenda sneaks over there and gets the basketball before Wobo. It's really good energy from Poland defensively that possession. Look at Kalenda get in, then he hands it off. Almost had a chance to take it all the way, but. Oh, 
Heilig drives in. Now Weiler Babb brings it back over to low. Germany on the attack. And Sokolowski steps in a little too late. No, the foul on Kolinda. See Tyson sitting next to Schroeder over there. Both from Braunschweig. Why do you think Tice is struggling to put those dunks away? Oh, he's just got to have a little more concentration. He's trying to, you know, make those dunks in traffic. He's got to finish those plays. Low, well short, and Wilder Babb swoops in for the rebound. Low again from long range. We get Jeff. That's a great thing for Poland. Low, Schroeder, Wagner, they've got to attack the rim. That's been the strength of Germany's offense the entire time. Well, we did see Watt, we did see Low especially make a lot of threes early in Cologne. But I take your point. Here's Sakowanski. Why the Rab explodes up the court, and he puts it up right before the end of the quarter. So, Germany have had some chances to race ahead, but Poland have also done well to stay within touch. Is Germany up 19 to 14 at the end of one? Ladies and gentlemen, basketball fans from all over Europe. As we look at the numbers, one key point, three for 10, three three-point makes for Germany. Again, they've shot the ball really well. Poland has yet to make a three-point shot in the first quarter. Rebounds even at 10. Again, for Poland, they've come out with the hard show pick and roll coverage in an attempt to try to keep the guards out of the paint. But they've got to be a little more active with their team defense. But I think they got to be happy with the tempo and pace of this game. Because as we say, the hardest thing for Poland today will be can they score enough to keep up with this German team. They've come out and been pretty solid in the first quarter. Wagner getting ahead with the dunk, and Schroeder with five points. Wagner and Tice each with four, and Bautrowski there playing. He's got a game high in this game. Or no, excuse me, he's got four points. I thought he had more than four points, four rebounds. code and you will get courtside 1891 on your smartphone for video stream schedules and scores one of the apps that you need to follow this great competition and all other national team competitions Kalinda guarding Mauro Low. So Kalinka back in the game. He's on Kifai. Kifai backing up, maybe trying to get that third foul, Punika. And able to score for Punika. A really good attack from Germany there. Gordy trying to post up Kifai on Punika in the attempt to get the foul. Kifai gets the bucket. Nika races in and he had the shot, just didn't finish. Nika had the triple double in points, rebounds, and assists against Slovenia in their win in the quarterfinals. Here's Lowe. He's putting on the deck, he gets swatted by Bautrowski, who's just been an animal on defense. Outstanding. Foul, and you know, you, you, you think of the multiple skills that he has on offense, but with his size, if he can become a real factor on defense, there's no telling how good he'll be. You know, and low turn the corner, and we've seen him get to the rim the entire tournament. And for Balcerowski to recover and block the shot is fantastic. He's got three block shots already in this game, 
Now he catches that in a tough situation with Timon. Now he's going to back up against Timon. Footwork there, the finish was not. But you love the fact he tried with his left. Timon spins and the reach and the foul. Jaskowski, Jay Z. Oh, Germany really coming out, making a point of emphasis to play through the post here. Mihailik comes out. Garbage comes in. Why do you think Mihailik is having a hard time getting any shots up at all? Uh, you know, he's used to coming off screens. Uh, maybe he's, you know, not getting some play calls as they're trying to, you know, get other players involved. But he can create his own offense. Oh, and almost forcing a turnover. Here's Lowe. Timon steps behind the arc. And Kaczorowski boxing out. They give him the benefit of the call. How many minutes can he play, and when does he need to sit down, do you think, The concern for Balcerowski as a young big man is he, he does have the tendency to get in foul trouble, yeah. and when he avoids the foul trouble, he can play more minutes. But he's been outstanding here for the whole So far, he has no fouls. We've got Kalinda over to Zaskowski. Now over to Garbage, and it's Lowe coming over the back of Balcerowski. And again, what we see, Oleg Balcerowski is emerging as a low post presence for Poland, and that's something that they haven't had throughout the entire tournament. You know, they've used Balcerowski with pick and pops. They've used him on uh, different situations in pick and roll. But it's great to see him establish the low post offensively and protect the rim on D. Balcerowski from a long way out. Broder back in the game with Obst. And good defense from Kalinda. Yeah, we see the defensive energy. We see the athleticism as a young point guard. He needs the experience to control the tempo of the game, organize the game, but he has so much potential for the next generation point guard for Poland. Quite, it's quite a, a challenge for him being guarded by Schroeder. Yeah, and he's got to be careful that he does not let the ball pressure speed him up. Balcerowski, bounce pass, look at that. What a play from Balcerowski. And Ponika gets a couple of free throws. He was one for the three-point play. So we'll have to settle for the two shots. And yeah, there you can see the experience playing together. And again, the versatility and skill of Oleg Balcerowski. He's put it all on display for everyone today. What, really what an outstanding performance for Poland's young big man. Really great to see how he's responded to this important game. Yeah, he's already got one assist. He'll get his second if Ponika makes one of these two free throws. Meanwhile, he's going to go out, and Jiva's going to come back into the game. And Ponika does make the free throw. First points of the quarter for Poland. Four points for Ponika. And Lukasz Kolenda goes out and Sokolowski comes back in. Really good minutes there from Kolenda for the team. Excellent effort on defense and organized the game very well. The pass, good hands, Poland. They really 
tightening up on defense, getting their hands up, pressuring the ball, the hard some turnovers. Shot. Oh, look at the rejection from Timos. Maybe that was the example of the line drive shot uh, that's easier to block. Now Schroeder gets in, has it knocked away. Great defense by Sokolowski. Yet again. Poland coming up with a defensive play. And again, look at Timon. Boy, he is just an absolute animal, beast. Timon making an impact here defensively, but again, with Dennis Schroeder, he can get to the rim. He needs to, to continue to pressure the rim. He's not really pressuring because he sees the hard show pick and roll. He's got to adjust his personal attack against the hard show and make stronger plays in the paint. Some nice blocks from Oleg Balcerowski. Again, the recovery, the length, the mobility. Poland fans love it. And Poland staff. They love it. Balcerowski out of the game. And there's Dirk Nowitzki watching, taking in events. And of course, uh, Balcerowski had that great experience playing at the FIFA Basketball World Cup three years ago in China, in Beijing, when Poland made it all the way to the quarterfinals of a tournament that a lot of people didn't expect them to even make to qualify for. Good defensive rebounding by Poland there. Germany won to put it in the post to Wagner. Solid defense and good rebounding. Sokolowski guarded by Schroeder again. He's able to take him. He just shoots right over him. And uh, anybody that thought this was going to be a stroll in the park for Germany or suddenly uh, realizing it might not be that way. Poland really blown away by France, but showing a different face today. Folkmann. Yeah, with the hard show pick and roll coverage, it's different type of shots right now. They're doing a good job keeping the guards out of the paint. So Sokolowski being guarded again by Schroeder. Now he's going to get it and he's going to score. And that was on the way down. It was in the cylinder. Yep. Good effort by Folkman. Watch this. But again, Sokolowski is an experienced post-up player, even though he's a small forward. And this is the value of posting up guards. Dennis is working hard athletically to try to win position. Poland is patient, getting the ball to Sokolowski and chipping away at the lead. Nice pass. Shiva called for a push on Folkman. I really think Folkman's uh, illness that he had here in Berlin set Germany back. I mean, he just, the previous two games, even though he was able to play, wasn't nearly at his best. I agree, Jeff. And, you know, everybody was focused on Wagner's health and his ankle. Would he be available? But that was in, you know, 
It was really Terrible timing underrated difference. Yeah. And tough timing, like you say. Not to say that Spain didn't deserve to beat them. Spain were excellent in, this, in the uh, semifinal. Karimbaki, the referee, calling the foul on. And we've seen Wagner get some fouls called posting up and now in the glow post. He's just got to have a little bit more defensive discipline and not use his hands so much. Hooking, holding, grabbing. He's got to work a little bit harder to defend. Ball goes off uh, Sokolowski's hands. And into the hands of Germany. Here's Schroeder. But if you're Germany, you love that pressuring the rim, getting to the rim like he did against Spain. He was so impactful doing that. There's Robin Benzing, longtime Germany national team player, former captain, and one of your former players, actually at home. And uh, one of the last cuts for this team, without a doubt. Tough decisions are made by coaches all the time, and that was one for Gordy Herbert. And it's great to see Robin here courtside supporting the, the German team. His heart is always with this national team. He's been such a key player for these guys for years, captain, leadership. He's had a great career in Europe. There he is. Great shooter. Always remember him playing against Serbia at the World Cup in 2010 and making this incredible. So wait, now I'm getting confused. Nope, I'm confused. Somebody else. Wipe that, wipe that thought. Before, it was Yagla that made the three-pointer yeah, falling out of bounds. But before Robin But came, Robin Benzing made a lot of big threes. And it, before he came to us in Rasher Farm Ohm in 2009, 2010, he made a game-winning shot for the German national team as a very young player coming from second league Germany in Langen. He made a game-winning shot against Russia. And that's kind of what opened everybody up to how wow, Robin Benz has got tremendous potential as a young player. And he worked very hard for us at Ulm and has gone on to play in Spain and Turkey. He's had a wonderful career. Um, and he's been a great player for Germany. Well, Sokolowski and those missed free throws continue to plague Poland to hurt their chances. to add some time or take some time off the clock. So nearly six minutes into the second quarter. Volkman puts it on the deck. Nice. And hopes that you can count it. That's Again, what he does. He's great attack and it calls out under control, but for your, your power forward, your big man, to make that pass, really, really skillful and intelligent. AJ Slaughter is going to have to rush it. He does, and Sell with the rebound. There is Sell for three. And Poland get on the ground for the ball, then Bontorowski maybe rushed that one or lost his balance or whatever, but another opportunity for German, Germany. Throw to wide open. And Bontorowski called for a push on Fulkman. Points hard to come by for Poland. Here we see the play. Look at Buckman attack the closeout, get into the paint. A little no look. Sent AJ Slaughter in rotation towards Schroeder, but he knew he had the hot shooting. Oops, in the I found Aaron Sell. Ultimately. Tice left open, and he makes it. 
He's actually been more effective from three-point range yeah. than he has around the basket. The pick and pop has been a factor. Again, that's a tough cover for Balcerowski. You see, Ulps engages the big Balcerowski, pop for Tice, and Tice buries the three. Timeout. Poland. So, Jeff, at this point, we see Ulps hit a three, and then we see Ulps hit another three. Germany is five for 16 from three compared with 0 for nine for Poland. So, the shooting from beyond the arc, we knew was an advantage coming in for Germany. Right now, it's playing out that way. In the second area, the free throws. Again, Germany six for six at the free throw line, Poland four for eight, leaving four points at the charity stripe. The question for Poland, could they keep pace scoring with this German team? And even though the pace has been at their liking, they're struggling to, to keep up. And in a way, maybe a little fortunate Germany haven't shot it better because throughout the tournament they had shot it better. There's a dump and it goes over the head of Sokolowski. Again, it's a good idea, just got to be a little bit better executed. Tyus Volkman tried to bat it out, but Puniko was ready. And Volkman leaning over to try to get away from Balcerowski, and, and they throw the ball off of Balcerowski. Schroeder helps him up. He's losing the ball before he got around the defender up there. Oh, presenting himself as a low man. And even though you're undersized, when you present yourself early to the big man in good position, you can impact the play. Really smart defense there from Oaks. Painful turnover <laughs> for those fans. When he goes down, I like back in. Monika sits down because he's got the three fouls. Broder, meanwhile, hits the three, and now it's a 14-point lead. Doesn't seem possible, but they've really been able to stretch that advantage here with Poland struggling, just scoring six points in this quarter. See the trap on AJ? Well, Heilig fouled by Tice. And Jeff, that's just not a smart play. You have Mihalik shooting a 30-footer with the shot clock running down. Wow. I mean, get a hand up, live with it, but that's just not intelligent at all. Not with a 14-point lead. Stop the clock, put him on the line for three free throws. And they're, they're struggling so much to score. And he's a good shooter, so you put a good shooter on the line. All it takes is one. See it go through the hoop, get feeling good. There we go. Jinxed him. The commentator jinx. <laughs> I didn't take any joy in doing that. They have had an awful time at the line today. Just 50%, but it's something that we discussed before. And this is two out of three, and now Schroeder leaks out and instead of taking three points off the deficit there on this nfl sunday that was a touchdown pass a bomb a fly pattern it was a fly for schroeder and here comes Falkman 
Schroeder over to Oates. And Valtorowski has just been sensational. Everything but scoring. Pass to Sokolowski coming in on the baseline. AJ read the trap well, made a beautiful pocket pass, and then the mid-roll decision to Sokko for the dunk. Great job by AJ. So he didn't take his hands out of his pocket, but there is Schroeder and another chance for Poland. He passed it into that area between the two defenders. Yes, the pocket. You enjoy the, the basketball parlance, don't you? I love the terminology. Oh, beautiful pass. Look at him, and Dan Vatorowski just not finishing. I guess you'd almost rather see him try to dunk it. There's Folkman. And well, I guess a Poland down 13, still with a chance at halftime. Probably a little bit of frustration for them on offense. It's Germany on top, 36-23 against Poland at the break. So already, Mike, if you make some free throws, you hit like a couple of three-pointers, and it's a close game. Yeah, Poland, again, 0 for 10 from three in the first half. A lot of credit goes to Germany and their defense. But then you look at the free throws, 5 for 11 for Poland, leaving points at the free throw line. 13 assists for Germany. The ball movement has to be there. They've got to understand that Ponika is being switched in his pick and rolls and AJ is being trapped. And then you can have a clear picture of how you need to attack and, and, and generate your ball movement. Well, as you look at the highlights, it's really, you know, free throw shooting is, okay, you can maybe not shoot free throws that well, but you, you simply cannot be sub 60. You can't be in the 50s. And right now, Poland's at 45%. Coming into the game, you knew this was a team that you were going to be challenged to keep pace with scoring. You cannot leave points at the free throw line, and you've got to hit some threes. Now, one thing they did well was establish the post through the guard play here of Sokolowski and, you know, Balcerowski. So that's a positive. And hopefully, Mateusz Panika and AJ can become more productive here in the second half. Uh, but again, you know, this was the challenge coming in. Could they keep pace? And right now, they're not helping themselves, you know, offensively with the shooting situation. Yeah, free throw shooting on in the tournament coming into this game, 71%. So they're well below that. And they've been shooting at 34% from three-point range. And they're 0% today. Oleg Paltorowski has been great. Here we see really good execution against the show. Teamwork. Ziskowski trying to help the team off the bench. Good ball movement for Germany. Schroeder has shot the ball extremely well, making him difficult to guard. We see Portman, again, intelligent decisions passing. This is when they tried to get the third foul on Panika Kifai. Really good post-up finish. Another guard post-up from Sokolowski. Showing his versatility. And this was a great no-look pass from Butman. Yeah, speaking of Folkman, he has only, only made one basket from the four. He's got five points. Uh, but he does have seven rebounds and five assists. I mean, you could argue he's the player of the game for Germany really contributing. So the spot on the podium is at stake. Germany having suffered a painful defeat to Spain at home in front of a full house in the semifinals. Just 20 minutes away if they can uh, press home that advantage against Poland.
stealing the basketball with Dennis Schroeder. Three-pointer. He just doesn't miss. Andreas Oops. is as hot as a German firecracker. He is not going to miss. Poirier with the spin. Gets it to Rudy. And again, they're posting up Poirier against this Kuski. That's a real advantage. They come over to help and then playoff penetration easy too. Wagner. Oh, look at him get in. Goodness me, he is better than advertised. The crowd just booing and odd as Franz Wagner goes to work. Battles Paditka for it. They end up giving the ball to France and Poirier flies in for the dunk. Watch him now. It's catch and finish for Poirier. Beat Germany in that crucial game in 2015 in the TV year basket. The bounce pass. When Garuba had it in the middle of the floor, the floor is spread and a great backdoor cut from Watson. The right time. Aldo Lowe bothered and nevertheless makes a three. Wow. Jeff, this Eurobasket has seen it all, hasn't it? Casually stepping across half court. Let me shoot this runner. Here's Ponica. Drives in. Oh, and that was just an elite block from one of the best defensive players in the world. And here we go. Tarpe throws it down. Roderick gets rejected. Usman Garuba then shakes his head at him. Great defense by Garuba. Alert. Saw Schroeder turn the corner and come over and help. Outstanding block. Schroeder and the alley -oop. How in the world did he get that to go down? What a great elevation and extension. He wants to take Rudy. He gets up. Oh! That was on the way down. It appeared, but they're going to say it was a good block. Watch this, Mike. Ooh, actually, I think they might have got it right. It looked like it was up at the top. Again, AJ, beautiful move, attacking the big man, but you see the recovery and shot blocking ability of Gobert. Thirty-six twenty-three, Germany on top of Poland here at PB Eurobasket 2022 in the third place game. And Germany starting, no doubt, as favorites. Poland have done a great job defensively. You know, they've really played hard. I guess really the only thing they haven't done is been able to make enough shots. I thought that guy was on the staff, Mike, but he wasn't. He was a fan. That's actually a great DJ in Poland. <laughs> That's why you looked at me crazy. Oh, he's yeah. a big sports fan. Sokolowski, Sokolowski has for several years been one of the main men for Poland. Just a real, what would you say, core guy. Yeah, 100%. Energy. Physicality. Take, give me the toughest guy and I will guard him. Yeah, he's taking on all challenges. In a lot of ways, he embodies the, the toughness and team spirit of Poland. 
he's really come to play here. And Dona Schroeder as well has 12 points to lead all scores. And Dennis making the shot from the corner. And uh, well, coach made him captain. And he had a great, great tournament. I think that last quarter, if uh, memory serves correct against Spain, uh, the, the strength of Spain bringing in uh, Alberto Diaz and locking him on to Schroeder really kind of showed that he's not unstoppable. Uh, but overall, he's been terrific. Yeah, Schroeder has played so well. Look, also, Mike, at halftime, the, uh, the handover took place, the official handover of uh, the Golden Balls for the host of the next TV Eurobasket, which will be played in 2025. So representatives from the countries that hosted it this year, at least for some of the countries, handing it over to Cyprus, to Finland, to Poland. Latvia. Latvia. And Finland. Yeah. So thanks for uh, those guys picking up the mantle. And multi-hosting has been a way of life in the PBU basket since 2015 when you coached at your first PBU basket. And I personally see no reason to change it. I think yeah, it's fantastic. I love it. It's, it has an NCAA tournament feel where there's games being played in cities all throughout Europe instead of just one final location where all the teams are, the, the groups are spread out. Andreas Oak, six points today, two of five from deep. He's been a key to their team. The three-point shooting, again, uh, this we knew was an advantage for Germany coming in, and, and again, 0 for 10 for Poland at half. That's something that you expect them to improve upon here in the last 20 minutes. He came in having hit 23 three-pointers. Of course, he's had more of a chance to hit some since uh, Germany have gone really deep into the tournament than some of the other guys, but he would, if you, if you were telling me I, I could choose one three-point shooter, the one guy that's really good at three-point shots. Well, in fact, uh, somebody else who's made a lot, Yabicelli of France, but I would pick Oaks. He's been sensational. Tejas Ponica, just four points today. He got into early foul trouble. And Jeff, as we've seen all tournaments, when Poland has been really good, Ponica and AJ Slaughter have been super productive. And the teams like Finland, like Serbia, and then obviously like France, when they've game planned and made it difficult for Mateus and AJ, it's gonna struggle for Poland. So credit to the game planning for Germany, but let's see if Mateus and AJ can try to, you know, spark themselves here in the second half. Enjoying the moment here in Berlin. This incredible city, of course, uh, later tonight. See some Alba fans as well here supporting Germany. Later tonight, we'll see uh, the latest France v Spain showdown in the PB Eurobasket. Those two teams have traded blows on a lot of big games over the years, and so have the coaches. With uh, Sergio Scariolo of Spain and Vincent Collet of France having been at the helm of those teams. Those two guys actually coached at their first FIBA Eurobasket in Poland in 2009. And uh, Scariolo of Spain beat Collet's France in the quarterfinals and then went on to win the FIBA Eurobasket for the first time. The side, the side stories are wonderful for this championship game really going to be a great matchup between France and Spain. But these next 20 minutes for these two teams will make the difference between going home with a medal or going home with fourth place. Hey, if they run that, they run the header, it's a triple with them. 
Mike, if Germany win, it's kind of confirms that they're one of the best teams. And if Poland win, they'll feel like they've won the title. Here we have uh, the Phoebe Eurobasket app scanning the barcode to get it into your smartphone. For all the news and information, results, scores, videos, photos. Look at those guys. They're working. Do you remember them? Yes. They're fantastic fans from Poland. Biało and Sherman in red and white. They will make a run here. They're going to try to spark their team. But Jeff, in the qualifying games for the World Cup, Germany and Poland were in the same group. And in the last game, July 4th, Germany beat Poland 93-83. In that game, Dennis Schroeder made seven of 18 three-point shots. So his three-point shooting made the difference in that game and in the first half was a big difference maker for Poland, or for Germany. Second half underway, Poland and Germany. Sokowski comes right out and hits the three-pointer. Gets it back to a 10-point deficit. He's got 11 points. First three-point make of the game, first possession of the second half. Poland looking to make a run. Picks up his third foul, trying to come up with the steal. Again, look at Balcerowski in the mid-roll decision. He's such a big target for your guards. You can hit him easily, and then he's an able enough passer to get the ball to the three-point shooter. Great job by Alts launches it and fouled. So he'll get three free throws. So Slaughter called for the foul, and with Oaks, you, you can only think he's going to go to the line. Warning, okay? Only behave. We cannot stand up like this, okay? This is a warning. So with Oaks, you would think he's going to get three makes could make a little wager he may have just engaged Jinxed him. the commentator jinx i think he's good enough to overcome it it was the hand check and then oaks did a great job of selling it yeah it, you know it's so tough because you want to stay you say hey lock and trail stay connected no separation and then Ops with just a quick footwork into his shot. It's really hard. AJ had the hand on the hips. No such thing as a commentator's jinx, Mike. He made it. I mean, I think a shooter reaches a certain level and they just surpass it. Unless it's like in the last two minutes of a close game, then it is relevant. Here's Sokolowski again. Bullet pass intercepted by Ponica, who avoids the turnover. Look at the bounce pass to Jay-Z, and then the follow by Ponica. That was all Mateus Ponica. Yeah, great defense. He knows the thought process against the show. Diver to diagonal. That's what Buckman was reading, and he played the passing line extremely well. Three-point shot. Most famous moment in Mateus Ponica Poland national team history is it coming up with the steal in Beijing against China at the end of the game and racing down. That's what I would, I would point to, but I, maybe he, he surpassed that with this triple-double against Slovenia. Of course. But if you talk about one specific moment, him coming up with that steal against China was, was a game-winning play. In China. Game-winning play. A loud crowd grew silent as Ponica had a great moment. Here's A.J. Slaughter. It's so unusual to see him not 
making shots, and now Bouchorovsky called for the foul. Again, credit to the German defense. They're really making A.J. work. He's having a difficult time finding his shots because of their defense, but A.J. just needs one to go down. And again, strong defensive rebound there by Tice for Germany. Tice, seven rebound, seven points, three rebounds. Here's Wagner. And another steal by Ponika. He's figured it out, hasn't he? Mateus is such an intelligent defender. Markowski falling out of bounds, able to pass it back. Here's Bacharowski, sets up for three. He just needed it to go today. Really good look. And the foul by Ponika, that's number four. A little bit of a tough break there as he was playing his position well and then loose ball pass collision as Tice cut to the basket. Uh, you're down by double digits. You want to gamble, come up with some steals. That's what he was doing, but also you reach. You're vulnerable for picking up the foul. You and you have to also recognize, okay, I've got three fouls to start the, the half. Yeah. I gotta be actually careful with this. Oops, from downtown. And good box out. Falkland still able to get it, but Poland had numbers. Still only down 11, Poland. But without Ponika for the foreseeable future. Sokolowski. Ziskowski. And the ball goes off of Tice's hands. Again, yeah, Tice, he's really giving great effort. We've seen him miss a couple dunks, not leave a couple leave a couple plays unfinished. Same situation here. Just got to complete that play, grab that rebound strong in traffic, secure that ball. Sokolowski drifts in, and the charge called on Sokolowski. Now they're going to talk about it. Maybe not. They might overrule this. They might change the decision. Johan Barroso, I think, probably wants to make sure. And they call the block instead of the charge. I'll tell you what, it is a rare day that you see a call change like that. But I think he had a clear view. Yeah, I think they had two different calls. One official discusses with the other. That's great teamwork. And again, I, you know, you'd love to see the replay. Perhaps Schroeder was in the circle. You know, he was right there. It was very close. Let's see if Poland can turn this into a little momentum, getting the lead under double digits. So Schroeder picks up the foul, and Sokolowski. Had some issues at the free throw line. That's the first. One for three so far. That's better for number three, and it's back to a nine point deficit for Poland. Folkman spins, loses the handle, and Poland can't quite get to the basketball. Here's Germany. Schroeder gets in, puts it up, and free throws for Germany. <laughs> you can always read the expressions. It doesn't mean that they're right. The referee has a good, a good angle. a rare sight. Schroeder missing a free throw. So Germany's first miss from the line today. Nine for ten. So, you know, again, those little differences mean a lot. Poland left points at the free throw line so far. Seven for thirteen. 
Lowe comes back in uh, for Obst, who goes out of the game with nine points. And ten point deficit for Poland. AJ Slaughter, especially with Ponika out of the game, would love to get it going, but they're just not giving him any space at all. Here's Zaskowski wide open. Again, trapping AJ's pick and rolls, making him give it up. And a flop has been called, a te or a technical foul has been called on Schroeder, who was complaining because a foul wasn't called. Sokowalski was saying it was a flop. Watch this. I don't think he called it on the flop, did he? He called no, it, I think it was the complaint. Yeah, after the discussion afterwards. Slaughter. Boy, what has happened to that Poland free throw shooter? They're at 7 of 14, 50%. Take seven points off this deficit, it's a three point game. Again, this is helping yourself win. And again, Germany, 10 of 11. Again, we see the hard show from Zaskowski. This is what Dennis has to do. He's got to hold the ball, hesitate, and as the show leaves, he's got to then look to attack and make a play, trying to find his teammate there on the pass. But again, he's been too hesitant, or let's say complacent against the hard show. He's got to continue to attack the ball. Wagner struggling to inbound the basketball. And the one thing Poland's defense does, it makes you work. So Germany, embrace the, embrace the work. Set screens, make cuts, play strong. That's how you're going to get good execution offensively. Good defense from A.J. Slaughter. And on that possession, Germany just went to the tank trying to get the ball in bounds. Again, you have to expect your opponents to work hard and make it, make it difficult for you, especially in a game like this. Let's see if Poland can build some momentum. Garbosh for three. You know what time it is. Garbosh time. And that's what he can do. He is a three-point shooting specialist for this team. They are now two for 17. But down seven, they feel like they have new life. Hold. Called on Slaughter. Well, Poland are long overdue to hit some three pointers. Now, two of 17. And Jeff, the opportunities will be there because they continue to trap AJ Slaughter. When they trap, then you've got to really pull in off of the, the rest of the players spotting up, and you can get them in rotation. It may not be AJ, but they have capable three-point shooters out here. Garbaj, Ziskowski, Sokowski, even Balcerowski. Teamwork ball movement can lead to those open threes if they continue to try. Both free throws for low. Germany now 12 of 13 at the line. Confetti falling uh, to the surface, and there's A.J. Slaughter. Now a six-point game. What's going on here? Poland not giving up the ghost. Holtman from downtown. Wow. That was from Humbert. <laughs> Kowalski almost traveled. Sokowalski. Sokowski. Bounce pass. Sokowalski goes up strong. 
And seeing a little bit of an extra bounce in the step of Poland now. Yeah, they're playing with more confidence, attacking closeouts, playing together. Again, when you go into halftime and talk about, hey, they're trapping A.J. Slaughter, you can give your team a clear picture of how to move the ball and get shots, and you see the difference. You know who hasn't really impacted the game much is Wagner. Strangely. And that's a surprise because Wagner is a definite matchup advantage for Germany. Here he is. See if he goes right on cue. For three, it looks good. It is good! Jeff, you have a feeling for the game from this play-by-play well, -play spot. You got a great talent. You got to get him in action. Here he goes. And taking the three and going down, Sokolovsky. Suddenly, Poland feeling as loose as a goose. Oh, good move by Lowe. Steps back. Look at Tice battle away for the rebound. Damn, the man, and that is a killer for Poland. And you know, you've seen Tice leave a couple plays unfinished, but look at his extra effort. Staying with it, finishing through contact. He has earned this three-point play opportunity. You can't blame Garbage on that. No, that I mean, it's again, it's a disadvantage situation. And when Daniel Tice is giving those multiple efforts on the boards, it's, it's a clear advantage for Germany. Really good to see Tice come up with a big play because he's working very, very hard on both ends. That was, uh, as Proto goes out, effort with a capital E. And we say multiple efforts. He, it wasn't just one effort. It was the tip. It was grabbing the board. It was collecting yourself and finishing through contact. Multiple efforts like that win basketball games. Or effort times four. Would that work? <laughs> Pennsylvania math? Yeah, that's right up the alley of Pennsylvania math, Jeff. It just doesn't seem to make sense. <laughs> the lead is nine for Germany. Starting to answer the challenge. Here's Slaughter, fades, and just grazes the net. We've seen what Weiler Babb did in the last game against Greece and Spain. Uh-oh, Weiler Babb uh, just kind of lost as he got in. And Tice with uh, the capital E effort again, almost coming up with a basketball. Yeah, I was just thinking about Kalinda with, after that last miss by AJ, maybe it's time to bring Special K back into the game. Quick pass down low and bounces off the feet of Germany. So Lukas. Lukas is coming back into the game. Why is he not coming in yet? Oh, he is coming in. Like AJ didn't want to come out there. Yeah, he's really locked into the game right now. Oh, there is Chiva putting it up and in. Uh, I agree. I, I just think sit him down for like a minute and a half or two, then put him back in. We have a whole quarter to play. A lot of basketball left. Yeah, so getting ready to come back, and Wagner fouled right at the end. But you can see the drop step on the pivot and length of Franz Wagner. So difficult to stop at the rim. Well, Poland have uh, won this third quarter so far. They're up 20 to 14. They've made Four of four three-point shots. Well, this is a guy that will you want to pay to watch. Wagner 
I, you're willing to pay to watch. I stand corrected. Four of nine. Four of nine. It's going to be interesting watching these guys when they go back to their uh, their clubs, including Wagner with uh, Orlando. Now the handoff, Garbage. They know that he wants to put it up. Here's Vukas. Shot clock about to expire. Zebra for three. So again, this group on the floor for Poland needs a clear picture of where their offense is coming from. They don't have Mateus or AJ to create for them. Yeah. Got they, issues in that regard. They need to stick within the system and know where they want to get their shots. So AJ is coming back in. And that's what I thought. Just give him a minute on the bench. Timon in the game has it knocked away by Cell. Nowhere to go for Timon. Back outside to low. Wow. That's when it really hurts you if you're Poland. So play good well D defended. and then they hit they hit a three, but that's what Low does. Sokowski. And Wagner. Drives in, has it. Gets the ball to Timon off the back of the cup. Sokolowski fouled by Weiler Babb. Good foul. Only the third team foul in this quarter. So that was how they responded. Stuck with it and you have to pass it out to the perimeter with time. You got any number of players that can hit the three, and Lowe certainly can. He's really been a great three point shooter for this team, mostly off his step back and creating off the dribble, but that time it was post reaction late in the clock. I would have said, Mike, in Cologne, coming out of Cologne, he would have had a shot to make the whole tournament team. That's how well he was 100%. playing. 100%. He played so well. Garbosh banks in the three. Wait, what day is it? It's Sunday, and the bank is open in Deutschland. It's rather unusual, but indeed it is. At least it's open for Garbage. Low. And Wobo for the rebound. Doesn't score with the follow, and a chance for Sokolowski in the open court. He's going to throw the lob. Wobo knocks it out of bounds. Poland lucky. You can't blame Sokolowski, but I'm not sure that was the right play there. Yeah, Jeff, that is a low percentage decision in transition. Garbage is a. It's not your leaper. He is your come three off screen, yeah. barrier three. That was a Garbage pass. <laughs> we recycled it into a new possession. And AJ Slaughter. They could really use him getting into, into the grooves here. Getting into the flow. Steps back. Ah, and that's AJ Slaughter. And that is why he did not want to come out, but that's why he needed to come out. He needs to stay in this game. You see, they just switched instead of trapped, and he took advantage of the mismatch at the top against Wilbon. You just need to come out and sit down. Sometimes it helps just to sit down for a second. Collect yourself, relax, and get yourself focused to go back in the game. Get a drink of water. Final 10 seconds. Germany have not shut this Poland team down yet. Low for three. And, oh, dangerous. So AJ Slaughter chases it. And you can see that Low down at the dumps a little bit, not shooting it as well as he was in Cologne. Even so, Germany up 54-49, 10 minutes remaining. Mike, it's been one of the toughest games for Gordy Herbert to coach against yeah. Poland, who just absolutely drilled in that last game, but they've shown a different face today. They've come out defensively. You see their, their finishing at the paint is improving, making the six three-point shots, seven three-point shots, six threes in the third quarter, but again, leaving seven points at the free throw line, 
could come back to haunt Poland in their comeback attempt. But for Poland, you've got to be happy. You know, you're, you've cut into the deficit. It's a manageable deficit now, five. And you've done it without, let's say, Mateusz Panika, who's been in foul trouble. So now you make one run. You've got Mateusz, you've got AJ, and you go for it. Now, German, Germany may very well pull away and win this game, or they may hold on, and they will be relieved because they simply cannot afford having gotten to the semifinals to lose two games. Yeah, it, it Poland, is, meanwhile, if they win, it is going to be it's going to be a celebration. Yeah, and you can see they're they're playing free. In the Berlin Arena, the smartphone lights are on and. Great atmosphere. So scanning that barcode, courtside 1891, and you have to say that with Punika on the bench, you know he wants to be in there, but at the end of the day, in international basketball, you're only as good as your last man on the bench. And uh, depth for Poland, playing more of a role today, perhaps. Yeah, and maybe that's the best thing that comes out of this tournament for a lot of these younger players or less experienced players. They're, they're gaining great experience on this big stage. And offensive foul by Wobo, moving screen into Sokowski, who's hustling like when you work hard, good things happen. And Sako playing with great energy, great effort, draws the moving screen on Wobo. I mean, he has had an outstanding game today. Sokowski with 18 points, five rebounds, three assists, and his usual tough as nails defense. Here's A.J. Slaughter. Just down, hands it off, and Jiva. And now we've got a three-point game, and Poland are going to play like their lives depend on it. They know they can get something out of this game. They can get to the podium. Big possession for Germany. Schroeder finds his way in and lays it up. They get smart decision from Dennis. He could have just jacked it free. Pressure the rim, got all the way to the basket. Schroeder with 15 points. He had 12 at halftime. Slaughter fouled by low. Okay, here we see Schroeder uses the shot fake. Nice little slide by against Aaron Sell, the low man to finish. But again, not settling for the shot and then finishing at the rim. Mike, this is kind of typical of Poland, though, isn't it? They just hang around. They come out, and they, they beat Slovenia. They, they get blown out by France, and then they come out, and they take on host Germany, and they really battle. Nice pump fake. Garbage. Time! Another three-pointer, and Poland have closed the gap to two. Hey, Jeff, Jakob Garbage is that streaky shooter. You see him come off the screen, use his shot fake to create space and very big three. Schroeder pulls up the dribble. And they continue to play. Pass to the corner. Weiler back. And that is the difference for Germany. When Schroeder makes his mind up to pressure the rim, he gets in the paint, penetrated pitch, open shot, big three for team. Weiler back. Here's the play, gets into the paint, draws the defense, and again, we've talked about Wilder Babs' defense, but there he is burying a big shot. Wilder Babs guarding AJ Slaughter, bounce pass, and look at the hustle from Jiva going up. So he gets a couple of free throws. Aaron Sell had wanted a foul, and they're just battling away. All hands on deck right now for Poland. 
starting to get a little bit of a reaction from Germany. You can feel it. They know they're in trouble. They've left. They've, they've let Poland hang around. Kamika's going to come into the game for Sokolowski with four fouls. And the Polish crowd excited. Jeeva with the first. Second. So Jeff, Poland now four for five from the free throw line in the second half. And we're with the three point shots, we have a three point game. Wilder bad from a long way out, and this time does not get it to drop. Sell hustles to the rebound. Poland can tie it with a three pointer. Their fans that have stuck by them, they will get on their feet! They've done it! They've pulled even! Jeff, you've got to find Jakob Garbach. Especially when he's feeling it from three. Look. Defensive breakdown, miscommunication, and that's simply too easy for Germany. It is game on, 59 apiece. Garbage has come to the party. The most important game probably for Poland today. He's come off the bench and he's brought the firepower. As you know, he can. He's got 12 points. And I believe, are they, is it all three pointers? Yes, four for four from three point range. Jeff, that's his game. Much in the same way Andy Holt is for Germany. Yeah, the, the designated three point shooter. Look at that. What an X factor. So for all the star power, for all the host nation status of Germany, for all the high expectations, it's the team neighboring in neighboring Poland that is pushing them to the limit here. Uh, possibly going to keep them off the podium. Long way to go. As Gordy Herbert said, it is what it is. Let's get to work. And a foul call. Jiva whistled for the foul. I don't think anybody that watched that game, Poland's performance against France, could imagine that this would be unfolding before us right now. But defensively, they came out and they really played well in the first half. That's why you play the game. Shot clock about to expire. Going to get to Timon for three. That's good. And Mr. Timon, who has been one of the heroes for Germany, Gets his first three points of the game. Very unselfish from Dennis Schroeder as well. Saw Poland load up against them, move the ball to team in. Rhythm three at the end of the shot clock. AJ Slaughter leans in to a three. Schroeder. Has it knocked away by Jiva. And then he gets it, and you feed the big fella who ran the floor. Great play on defense by Jiva, and then he hustled down and made the layup. Outstanding transition D, loading up, putting bodies in front of Schroeder, and then finishing at the other end. Pokemon. And again, the hands up for Poland. 
We saw early in the game with the hard show defense, Poland was a little slow with their rotations and establishing their health side defense. Now they're extremely active and benefiting. Offense from defense there, Jiva. AJ with a beautiful pass to the trailing big. Ufanger. And again, the hands up. Timon, Folkman for three. Get it! And they're just, uh, even though they haven't made a, a ton today like they usually, well, in fact, now they're up to 12. It's not coming easy for them, but they've just hit two big shots. One aspect that makes this a great, you know, potentially great Germany team is their three-point shooting. Sell answers! And that's what we've been waiting on from Aaron all tournament. Yes. We haven't seen it. That's what he can do. He makes good decisions passing the ball, stretch four, buries a big three. His team needs it the most. He's right there stepping up. Great job, Aaron Sell. Folkman again! Gordy Herbert dials up the pick and pop after Buckman hit it. Nice play from Schroeder to feed him. AJ Slaughter gets in. Tough layup attempt. And Valsarovsky had his hand on it. I think Germany realized this thing, this uh, third place is about to escape them, so it's about to, to leave them. They're turning it up a notch. Timeout. Four fouls, three fouls on Slaughter. Folkman has just been outstanding. We talked about how illness while here in Berlin kind of set him back and set Germany back, and he's just kind of showed you how important he is with his 14 points, eight rebounds, six assists today, and coming out and making plays in these key moments. He's a great decision maker, and now he's showing everybody he can be a great pick and pop three point shooter. And Again, also the leadership that you he know, brings. You see. What I want to point out is the late clock unselfishness from Germany. They recognize Poland loading up on Schroeder, trying to really take away, put bodies in those driving lanes, and they're making the extra pass that's opened up those late clock threes, rhythm threes for their teammates. Unselfish play for Germany in late clock situations. So Schroeder at the line with a chance to stretch the lead to six. Jeff, we're into winning time. All of these possessions carry a lot of influence. So the best free throws made for Schroeder. For Schroeder now. Can Poland keep up the pace? About to go off. And Gage gets blocked by Weiler Babb. 
Great play. Outstanding defense for Weiler Bab. Schroeder. And that is a big one. Jeff Poland tried to switch to a zone mid possession. Again, Germany kept their composure, moved the ball. Schroeder buries another big three. And Fulkman with the foul. Smart play. Again, take a look here. Fulkman, again, the decision maker in passing. Unselfish extra pass from Tiemann. Tiemann is just like the perfect player for this Germany team, isn't he? He's, he's a ball mover. He connects. He just doesn't do things. He makes the right decisions. Yes. He's almost the coach on the floor. Now, Markarovsky has to go down. Is able to get it to Ponika. He goes in and misses with the runner. So again, Poland in a zone. You get the feeling sighs of relief are being breathed here by the crowd as Germany turn it up a notch. Wagner missing. Now Sokolowski for Poland, and they need to come up with something on this trip down the floor. And almost a turnover, but Wagner couldn't hold on to it. Now. AJ gets in and puts it up and in. Great strong finish. AJ working so hard to score against this defense. Germany's really guarding him really hard, making it a challenge. And they're just going to let the, the, the clock go down. I hate that, Mike, don't you? What are we doing here? Man, that's just maybe it's smart, but. Again, the zone, it's a tandem at the top. They lift the wings out of the corners. Schroeder for three. Again, Jeff, Dennis Schroeder was the difference maker in their most recent matchup in Bremen in the qualifier. Seven for 18 from three because they played certain pick and roll coverage, keeping him on the perimeter. And again, here he is today, burying another big three, four for seven. And this one in winning time when it matters the most. And there he is, uh, slapping high low fives with Robin Benzing. Sitting courtside. Schroeder, Folkman, Weiler, Bab, Timon, all these guys making plays late in the game that are the difference really for Germany. And that's been the mark, the trademark of this German team. It's been a collective effort. They got a lot out of their role players all tournament. Oh. And Ponika tried to get up. He spun it's the right move, but Folkman was not going to be fooled. Second block shot of the day. And charge called. Again, Schroeder did a great job running the clock down, milking the clock. Future point guard, Schroeder. Got the right jersey on, Lakers. And again, you can see the charge. Panika, it's been a rough day for him, but let's give credit to AJ and Mateus. They are the targets of the game plan from Germany. They know, make these guys work. He 
is AJ over to sell. The clock starting to become the enemy for Poland. They've got to hurry. Bonica from the corner. Good. And back to a seven point deficit. Beautiful consecutive pass from Ziskowski there and Bonica making a big three. Germany will take time off the clock. Panika has the four fouls. So, sitting back in his zone now. Here's Schroeder and loses it out of bounds. Again, respect the competitiveness of this Poland team. They're right there competing, fighting. Intelligent play. Schroeder loses it. So the question is, do they have enough time? AJ Slaughter puts it up from deep. It's been so hard for him to get shots today. He's made that shot well capable. He's got 10 points and 10 assists, AJ Slaughter. So even on a tough day, he's got a double double. But it has been hard work. Wagner hits the cutter. And Timon with a three point play opportunity. And if that's on Ponica, that is number five. So a tough exit for Mateus Ponica, who really struggled in the semifinal and got into foul trouble today. But Jeff, he has been the leader of this team. Yeah. He has put them on his back and carried them here. The triple double against Slovenia, the big performance against Ukraine. His leadership, his performance has been unbelievable for Poland this entire tournament. You know, the, the entire past several years. Yeah, without a doubt. And, and again, it's a frustrating moment. You you give your heart to your national team. You you put everything on the line. You have the dream, and you've got to be able to manage success and failure in the right way. Again. You know, not the way he would like the game to go, but you've got to give credit to this German defense, the game plan from Gordy Herbert. They have made Ponika and Slaughter work today. And I think the positives for Poland, some of the some of the other players have really stepped up and helped the team. Yeah. And I think that's wonderful for the future. Yeah, you gotta probably the one criticism you could level at them over the last previous two games is they needed to get more production from their bench. And today they provided it. Yes. Dennis Schroeder's leadership, playmaking. But I think the three-point shooting, and whereas in the past people would say he's a non-shooter, keep him out of the paint, play pin and under, pick and roll, give him those threes. He shot 33% in the NBA last season. You cannot any longer not guard him out there. But the challenge is the strength is the continual pressure on the rim, getting to the rim. And when he shoots the ball like that, he is so difficult to do. So the lead back to 11, and Poland have very little time. They've got to launch it. Ziskowski, and that was always going to be a difficult make. Having to force up a three. Lukas Kolend is going to come back into the game. Offense, defense, sub with AJ Slaughter.
surprising pass there from Wagner. Again, numbers level, easily deflected against the trap or the double team. Use a pass fake. Again, out of the strike zone. Well, the foul, and I guess it's Dirk Nowitzki clapping and uh, happy that Germany is going to get to the podium unless something uh, miraculous happens here at the end for Poland. And uh, you can only praise Poland for getting this far and coming out strong today after their disappointment in the semifinals. It's experiences like these that are gonna, they're going to help them get better. Look at Wukash Kalinda coming up. Almost forcing the turnover. Schroeder has it. So Germany had hoped to come away with a spot in the final and maybe even the title, uh, but at least they're not going to leave empty handed. They will get to the podium, the bronze, and Poland will have to settle for fourth place. But don't forget, important next two, three years coming here for Poland. They will be one of the hosts of the next FIBA Euro Basket in 2025. And lots of decisions to be made about how they want to get ready for that. Without a doubt, but this has been a wonderful moment for Polish basketball. Great team performance. And they can go back to Poland. Heads held high. Heads high. Tremendous pride. The country can be proud of these guys. And it's another great moment for this core and these players. And I couldn't be more proud of them. And again, for Germany, it's also that, that moment of pride. The bronze medal, hosting Eurobasket. And what about what about that relationship there, Gordy Herbert with uh, Schroeder and his players, and Robin Benzing, and the disappointment of missing out on this, but at the same time, he's able to come here today and share in this uh, at the end. Look at Wukash putting up the three, goes out of bounds. And really, one of the big questions will be, how good will Germany be next year? We, yes. we expect we expect them to qualify for the FIBA Basketball World Cup. Hey, Jeff, there's a lot of big names who are not with this team right now. But give this team credit for the bronze medal and a great tournament all the way through. Well, Dennis Schroeder with 26 points. Great performance by Johannes Folkman. And Germany win it 82-69 over Poland. They reach the podium and again some disappointment for Poland but they were it was always going to be difficult for them really from the knockout from the start of the knockout round and to make it this far for Poland it is a, a huge achievement but hopefully they're unhappy you know you yeah. want to be unhappy and you want to re remember hey I want to get back here and win it next time. Take the good experiences, learn what the level, what it takes, and again, not be satisfied. Keep fighting for developing and to get better and fight for more. So the medal ceremony will take place here after the game for Germany, who I think, quite frankly, for all of these players and all the fans, it's relief and celebration and maybe not the medal they wanted. But as we always say, it's better to leave a tournament with a win than a loss. But I think in Poland's case, they leave again with their heads held high and the knowledge that they actually had some memorable wins, memorable performances, and achieved so much more than most people expected. So Daniel Tice with his kids. They've been able to watch their dad win a medal. Ten to thirty-one from deep for Poland. Five more makes for Germany from long range. Free throws really let Poland down. That kind of put him in a difficult spot. I'm not sure you'd say that's what cost him victory, but it certainly didn't help. Germany out rebounding him, 
Two more steals for Poland. Their defense was great. Don't forget, Sokolowski had a terrific game with 18.6 rebounds. And uh, Garbage had his best game today, probably 12 points, all threes. The TCL player of the game. So Johannes Folkman honored for his terrific performance. Good to see. In those really difficult moments in the game, he really stood up today. 14 points, nine rebounds, six assists. Also had a couple of blocks. So that'll make him feel even better, I think. Without a doubt, a great way for him to finish the tournament. You know, the fans are really pleased here for this German team. Great turnout. And again, that's a, it was a road game basically for Poland, so. So the sad looks on the faces of Poland, and again, I think it's going to sink in pretty quickly that it's it's been a, a really good year basket. They had some bad losses, but they had some great wins and great performances. And you talk about overachieving, doing something that no one expected, and, and obviously the signature upset beating Slovenia. Poland has so much to be proud of. These guys have really created a wonderful story for Polish basketball. And you see Schroeder in Germany. So Poland are going to stay for the ceremony and watch them uh, watch them take their medals. They've never made it this far that I can remember in a tournament like this to, to be able to sit back and watch the medal ceremony. So they want to see what it's all about. And good to see a little bit of emotion coming from uh, Dennis Schroeder, who was made captain of this team. And again, really came up with the goods in most of the games. It was just that one game against Spain in the fourth quarter where the brilliance of Spanish basketball just uh, just won the day. And that's what happens in a tournament. You play a wonderful game, great game, tough game, but you have to give credit to this German team. They've been fun to watch. They've played really good team basketball. They've been explosive offensively at times. And Dennis Schroeder has been a leader, but it's been more than just one player. Different players have really contributed in a great team way. So we've got some qualifying windows. So these, you know, many of these players will be back in action, getting ready for the next window coming up later this year. And uh, Poland have not made it. Uh, they're out. Uh, it was a tough qualifying campaign for them. So they're going to turn their attention to the next uh, Eurobasket. And Robin Benzing there, the former captain, and painfully missing out on this experience, but. He knows that over the course of his career, he's made an amazing impact on this uh, program and will always be viewed in uh, positive light. You can see the respect that his teammates have for him from the very beginning of the game, coming over to shake hands, give him a hug. Even manager Armin Andres came over. Again, that's respect from the entire team. Garbage on the left, Jiva on the right. Great experience for those guys here playing on this level, understanding what it takes, and they can gain confidence from their performance. Both guys contributed and did a very good job. And the next Schroeder in line for greatness. I guess he's gonna be watching some big time basketball in the coming, uh, coming months with his dad signing for the Lakers, which he announced after their loss in the semifinals. And So we're gonna 
have the presentation for the bronze medals. So Turgai Dimarel, the FIBA Europe president, Kamel Novak, the FIBA executive director of Europe, and Ingo Weiss, the German Basketball Federation president, will be doing the honors. Kamel Novak used to be a player himself, as did Turgai Dimarel. will allow the home fans uh, to uh, to remember this this big moment for their national team. The last time they got to the podium, 2005, when they got this they got to the silver with Dirk Nowitzki in Belgrade. So it's been a while. Not easy to get there. Bro. Not easy so, to get there. So Ingo Weiss on the left and Kamil Novak in the middle, and on the right it's Turgai Demirel. And now the players come out. So you look at those players, Mauro Lowe, Nils, Defy. Uh, you've got also uh, Nick Weiler, Bab, Johannes Folkman, Franz Wagner, Daniel Tice, Dennis Schroeder. Johannes Wolfhart Boderman, a.k.a. Wobo, Justus Hollitz, Johannes Timon, Andreas Oaks, and Christian Singfelder. And the, I think maybe the beauty of this team, in a way, is not only did they play as a team, but everybody contributed. And remember, Singfelder was the player of the game in the win over Hungary. Hollitz came out and finished double digits and assists. So... You know, and Gordy Herbert really has to be applauded because I think he put together a good competitive team that ultimately was, uh, you know, undone in that fourth quarter against Spain. Otherwise, they've they've been. It's hard to take issue with anything about their about their performance. It was a great tournament for them, and again, the mark of a good team. Different players step up at different times. They play well together, make each other better. And again, you can see it was settled from the beginning, and a lot of that goes to Gordy and his coaching staff that really help these guys understand their roles, accept their roles, and play well in their roles. So everybody, now the team, and also the support network. I know, Mike, you often talk about all those guys with Poland, that the dominator, and uh, Germany also has all of these guys. They're around each other all the time. It's not just the players, and that's more like it. It's good to see those smiles. And, that, and when you see this, this is when you know it's much better to leave a tournament with a win, even though it's not the medal that you had wanted. Without a doubt, again, it validates all of their success, all of their hard work, all of their victories. That's what's difficult for Poland, walking off the floor empty-handed. But a great moment for Germany, successful Eurobasket here in Berlin. And it really was a very good team performance. Well, as a host nation, they have been utterly brilliant. Bro uh, Germany. Look at Germany. A lot of good players weren't in this team. That you know, you, 
you look forward and you wonder how they're going to fit in. I mean, it's tough decisions. You talk about Maxi Kleber. You talk about Isaiah Hartenstein. You know, you talk about a, a number of really good players. Tibor Place as a, as a five rim protector. You can go down the list of a lot of could be potential impact players. But I think what they did, they identified guys who could play a role and they came out and became a great team. And it was great to see Poland again for one last time in this tournament. Just show us a lot of the play that makes them special and plays like that from Panitka and Sokowatsky. And again, don't forget how well Kaczorowski played, especially in the first half. Maybe not so much with the scoring, but everything else. And it has to be, for Poland, that team play. Yes, they have some really, really outstanding players. Panika, A.J. Slaughter, and potentially Bacharowski really taking it up a notch. But it's the team play that they need to, need to have that's going to make them successful. This has been what helped the team survive for years. This is what makes the team special. And again, you look at some NBA level players on different rosters, Poland doesn't have that. So they know they need each other. And what's been wonderful is seeing the core develop, find a way to solve the puzzles together, get a clear picture of how they're attacking together. And this is the beauty of European basketball, the beauty of teamwork and why we love the game so much. Garbosh and you know in talking about other players, you know, Jeremy Soan, I'm guessing will feature in this polo team at some point. See how his uh, first NBA season goes in San Antonio, but clearly lottery pick, a lot is expected of him, and just that little extra bit you would you would imagine would would uh would make them even tougher to beat. Well, he he'll be a big part of the future in Poland for sure when he's available. Uh, you know, I'm sure he would have loved to have been here, but he's focusing on his rookie season. But Jeremy is a great young man, tremendous talent, and I know so many people in Poland are excited about him. And you love his passion for the national team. I think he'll be a big factor for years to come. So Dennis Schroeder making three of his 26 points and again kind of the sad looks from Poland or reflective looks and then the celebratory smiles of of, uh, of Germany and uh, we are at the end of it so here is the opening game score 82 69 Germany over Poland so Germany wins the third place game Next up, Spain taking on France for the Eurobasket title. Well, Germany started this FIBA Eurobasket setting out to prove they were the team to beat. And the longer that it went on, the more likely it appeared it would be then. They didn't get to the final though, because Spain had other ideas. However, they finished with a win and Germany gets to the podium. They finished third with a victory over Poland.